Hello friends, welcome to the video of curriculum design focusing Jerome Simon Brunner's model of curriculum design. This video provides you a clear understanding of the topic Brunner's model of curriculum design. This topic is related to the MMET course of curriculum development. I am Dr. Evangeline Whitehead, created and presenting this video. Curriculum development constitutes how a curriculum is planned, implemented and evaluated along with different processes and procedures are involved. Curriculum models are designed by various educationalists to provide a basis for decisions regarding the selection, structuring and sequencing of the educational experiences. Jerome Simer Brunner's model of curriculum design. Jerome Simer Brunner, 1915 to 2016. Jerome Simer Brunner was an American psychologist and educator who developed theories on perception, learning memory and other aspects of cognition in young children that had a strong influence on the American education system, which paved a way to launch cognitive psychology. He was one of the key figures in the so-called cognitive revolution. Brunner received his doctorate degree in psychology at Harvard University in the year 1941. In 1945, he became the professor of psychology in Harvard University. In the year 1972, he left Harvard University to become a professor of experimental psychology at the University of Oxford. His translated book, the process of education in 1960 became a powerful stimulus to the curriculum reform movement of that particular period. Brunner's Constructivist Theory The major concept of this constructivist theory is that learning is an active process in which learners construct new ideas or concepts based upon their present knowledge. According to Brunner, all children have natural understanding and curiosity and they have a desire to become a competent at various learning tasks. When a difficult task is present to them, they try to compete it, however, they become bored. A teacher must therefore present schoolwork at their age level that challenges but does not overwhelm the child's current developmental stage. Moreover, the task is best presented to the children within a framework of structured interaction between teacher and child. And the teacher makes use of and she builds upon skills that the child has already acquired. Brunner refers this framework as scaffolding. Scaffolding is a process through which the teachers, elders or able peers offer support for learning. This support gradually less frequent and as and when it becomes unnecessary. Brunner says we teach a subject not to produce little living librarians on that subject but rather to get a student to think for himself to consider matters to take part in the process of knowledge getting. Knowledge and knowing is a process and not a product. In this book, Towards a Theory of Instruction. Brunner's Theory of Instructions. Brunner, 1966, states that a theory of instruction should address four major aspects. Number one, predisposition towards learning. He introduces the idea of readiness for learning. Number two, Structure of knowledge. The ways in which a body of knowledge can be structured so that it can be most readily grasped by the learner. Number three, effective sequencing. One particular sequence will never fit every learner. Every lesson can be presented in increasing difficulty. The material should be presented in the most effective sequence. Number four, Reinforcement. Rewards and punishments should be selected 
and used effectively. Good methods used for structuring the knowledge should result in simplifying and generating new prepositions. Good methods that increasing the manipulation of information. Bruner's threefold analysis of experience. Number one, inactive representation. It is action based. The age level is zero to one year. Number two, iconic representation. It is purely image based. The age level covers year one to six. The third is symbolic representation and it is purely language based and it starts from seventh year onwards. Bruner's threefold analysis of experience suggests that learning is more impressive if one proceeds from the concrete to abstract or from specific to general because more senses are involved and the relationships are built in a more pronounced manner. Bruner's threefold analysis of experience. It starts from inactive, then iconic and symbolic and finally it reaches success. Inactive representation. It is action based. It covers the age group of zero to one year. This mode is used within the first year of life. Learning by doing means learning through a sequence of actions. Inactive refers to the direct or actual experiences. This is a direct encounter of students to understand what it is. This is a life on the raw, rich and unedited. They form the basis for all other learning experiences. The next one is iconic representation. It is image based and the age group covers year 1 to 6. This mode is used from first year to 6 years. The information is stored as sensory images. In this stage, information is stored as images. Here, learning happens through observations and series of illustrations. Iconic refers to the more abstract experiences which could be in the form of pictures and illustrations. The third one is symbolic representation. It is language based and it covers from age 7 onwards. This mode starts from 7th year onwards. In this stage, knowledge is stored in the form of a code or symbol. Here. Learning happens through series of symbols. Symbolic refers to the words or printed materials which no longer resemble the subject matter of study. Bruner's Spiral Curriculum From zero to first year, the child begins learning with authentic engagement. From the first year to six years, the child organizes learning through thematic curriculum. When the child grows, she makes periodic revisiting of topics and themes. Learning complexity increases with support. Finally, the student attains mastery of her learning process. Bruner's Spiral curriculum is an approach to education that involves regularly revisiting the same educational topics over the course of a student's education. Each time the content is revisited, the student gains deeper knowledge and understanding of that particular topic. It has the benefits of reinforcing information over time to time and using prior knowledge to inform future learning. Bruner's concept of spiral curriculum says that young children need to learn different concepts by structuring the ideas rather than simply memorizing their related facts and data. 
Bruner believed that the teaching and learning process of any subject at an early age should be designed according to the child's intuitive grasping of ideas. Subjects are taught to students year after year at in increasing levels of complexity. The best curriculum should revisit earlier learned ideas, expanding upon them until a child reaches a more complete understanding of individual ideas and how they relate to one another. Bruner called this as the spiral curriculum. In spiral curriculum, the ideas are presented in repeated learning opportunities over time and are organized from the simple to the complex, from the general to the specific and are examined in relation to one another. Three key principles of spiral curriculum. The spiral approach to curriculum has three key principles that sum up the approach nicely. The three principles are cyclical, increasing depth and prior knowledge. Cyclical. Students should return to the same topic again and again for several times throughout their school career. Number two, increasing depth. Each time when a student returns to the topic, it should be learned at a deeper level and explore the topic more complexity. Number three, prior knowledge. A student's prior knowledge and understanding of the particular topic should be utilized when it is written to so that they built from their foundations rather than starting it anew. Implications of Bruner's model Instruction must be appropriate and it should match with the level of the learners. Teachers must consider inactive, iconic and symbolic modes of students and prepare appropriate materials for instruction according to the difficulty levels of the learners. The teachers must revisit and revise the material to enhance knowledge. Students should use their prior experiences and structures and to show involvement in learning new knowledge. Teachers should scaffold her learners in the initial stages and it, it should fade away when it becomes unnecessary. Teachers' feedback should be directed towards instinctive motivation. Bruna says, experience, success and failure not as reward and punishment but as information. In Bruna 1961, page number 26. So thank you for watching my video of Jerome Bruner's model of curriculum design. I hope this video will be very useful to you. Thank you.